And you mentioned Max Carlage. Like, how would you reflect on all that kind of thing? That's quite funny because I seem to be the slight fall guy for that. That's fair enough. But he was introduced to me by a guy called Nathan. I forgot Nathan's surname, but he was the Happy Mondays manager at one point. Nathan, I've forgotten his name now. So he had some legitimate sort of credentials and Sean McCluskey, who I used to be in a little label with, he used to do one, two, three, four with me and um, and Percy. And um, and he was in, Nathan McGough. And he'd been Happy Mondays manager. So he had a track record and he introduced Max as an old friend of his. And um, so that's how Max got through the door. And then, you know, it's like, then you have this some weird, weird mission creep or something. And then he just turns into a complete, like, clingy lunatic. But he was, he was just another character on a cast of characters. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, and ultimately, right, I'm actually glad Max made his film. Do you know what I mean? And he was, yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't the most managed experience, but you know, there's some there's some there's some gem moments that he's got. And I bet he I bet if he got all Max's rushes, um, there would be some more gems on there. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know what's happened to the guy. But um I've still <laughs> I've still got an African birthing stool, he gave me. All right. <laughs> So I do think of Max from time to time. It's in my kitchen, sort of where you stick stuff like the mop bucket and all that and the hoover. But um, there's a there's a birthing. He told me it was a birthing stool. It might just be a three legged little stool with beads. On it. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so I I do think of Max. Bless him. And you know, and there was all that exciting stuff with the sword and the assault and the rookery and all that. So you know, he's he's another. You know, he was a definite character and. Ultimately, you know, let's be fair, you know, Max wasn't, Max was a loving guy, right? And he was treated more cruelly than he ever treated anybody else. You know, he was treated quite nastily a lot of times. And it was his resilience to being treated like a complete mug that allowed him to get that footage because he would be, you know, he'd turn up in, he'd be invited to Wolverhampton, he'd turn up there and then he'd just get abused and told to fuck off by whoever. And um, and he would take it and he'd turn up the next day. And in a lot of ways, that's dedication. So madness meets madness, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, but, you know, respect to him. And there's some good moments, you know what I mean? I mean I mean, stalking Pete Doherty. I mean, it's, it was stalking <laughs> Pete Doherty. Yeah, we did um do like a series on Patreon. Like, did we did like a deep dive into the documentary? It's quite it's quite good going through it. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I have to see it again. <laughs> yeah, I have to see it again. Well, I did. I did actually put it on YouTube, but I got a. Uh, I think Max got it taken down, so I don't know if he's. Oh, it copyright struck it. Yeah, and then I got an email saying. This Max Carlish is, is yes, claim this you need to take it down. I was like, fair enough. <laughs> That's a little bit grabby, Max. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Let's face it. That's a little bit grabby. If I ever see him, I'll, I'll give him his damn birth and stuff back. <laughs> I don't want to have a grabby man. <laughs> um, but was he someone that was promising money at the end of it? Was that the idea? Or not really? I don't think it was a money thing. No, it was the idea of, I'd been into a guy called, I think it was Bob Gruen. And he was a guy who would hang around the early punk scene in New York. And there'd just been a film come out of his that I saw somewhere down on the South Bank. And it was great footage of the New York Dolls and Blondie, uh, all these sort of characters. And it's some amazing, like, you know, like, just loose backstage, just natural footage. And I was really into it at the time. And then I think just about then he came and um, turned up and I thought, wow, you know, let's, let's, we're going down this route. And I just was like, you know, it's great to see, you know, just getting, because it's, because you've got to remember now it's slightly different. Um, there wasn't a cam phones cameras, you know, then it was just before that. Obviously we had mobile phones, but they weren't the powerful, sort of multimedia tools that they are today. So, you know, there was a lot less nowadays, every moment of, you know, 
of, of most people's lives you know gets caught or any publicly consumed you're not going to be backstage now i'm sure without someone filming but back then it wasn't like that so you know to get all that footage because it can be lost you know and then you get you get because it's you see all these moments that are so beautiful get lost in time and it's great you know and when you see you know funny enough we're talking about a label as someone posted justin posted uh of the of the one two three four offices there was um he was a character around there. He was a fit. So he came in and, he, and I don't even remember him coming in with cameras, but he must have had like um, a mini DV kind of camera, which was a, you know, it's a tape the size of a packet of, well, not quite the size of a pack of cigarettes. Uh, but, um, and, um, and he, he had all this footage of our office and it, it was amazing. It was so moving to see it. Everybody looks young and it just looked like if you were looking at a, uh, you know, fact footage from factory records back from, you know, a decade earlier and it looked so good and it's like a hustle and everybody's in it. He's got this track that he put out uh, or that he made at the time. I don't remember it because it was like, um, I had a very, very strange dream last night was the sort of tagline. And then all these people, you know, Mick Whitnell was in it. Dave was in it who worked there. Lily was in it. Uh, Sean's in it. Alan, uh, Alan Wass, God rest his soul. It was in it, the great set, I'm in it. Um, yeah, Percy's, you know, all the characters back then, it's just the office and it was amazing seeing that I didn't know it existed and it was so amazing to see. And, you know, it's, it was, you know, it was, they were good times and, you know, and long answer, but Max was just part of that. And, you know, now we take it all for granted, but back then it wasn't. And, um, you know, Anne McCloy, who used to do the merch, she used to be a camel. I bet she's got some amazing footage. And the footage I really want to see is there was a character who used to hang about. Oh, what's his damn name? Ronnie. I don't remember what his surname is, but he used to film us live. And I remember seeing something, and he's really, I thought his rushes were amazing. And I don't think anybody's ever seen them. And I went to see him once about it, and I don't—I was still kind of not thinking straight, and I don't know what's happened to Ronnie, but he's got a ton of footage of of Baby Shambles live, and it's like he was a good cameraman. He used to get great footage, so that all Ronnie's stuff is out there. And Anne McCloy got—he got, yeah. I don't know. I've never looked through all his footage, so I don't know what he's got. But Anne used to do the tour bus. There'll be some great stuff there, and you know, and I guess. And I guess it was, you know, in a lot of ways, you see, that's the thing. If someone weren't prepared to turn up with a camera and film everything was, was they were doing a service back then. Do you know what I mean? So it's, you know, yeah, so, oh, great. Someone, and, and in the context of me seeing this Bob Gruen and wanting that, then, oh, this guy's up for filming. So it seemed like a good idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Long answer, sorry.